everyone, it's Darby from RejoicingCreate.com and recently I had created this little fold flat treat pouch which had a really neat little bottom onto it and you could fold them flat to store them but it opened up like this and you could fit some treats, goodies, or small gifts into it. Um, I had been asked if, I, if this fits a moon pie and I've been trying to find one. I am sorry to say apparently that I live in the moon pie deprived area because I cannot find a moon pie. But from what I remember, that this would not be wide enough. But I can't fit it for there because I can't seem to find one yet. So I'll keep looking and see if there's something I can do on that end. But I was also um, asked if I could make this a little smaller to fit like maybe a couple of kisses. And I experimented with a couple of things and this is what I came up with. I think it turned out just so sweet and adorable. And it opens the same way. It's a little flat. And it will hold two Hershey's Kisses or it'll hold a nugget, um, or even a Linder ball, but it will not hold a Ferrero share. They're a little bit too wide. So if you think of Linder ball or two kisses, that's the kind of size that'll work. Maybe a couple of Starbursts, because the kids seem to like the chewy candies, or even um, perhaps, what's that other one that they like? Uh, oh, Jolly Ranchers and things like that. So some small, a couple of small things would be a really nice little treat for a Halloween party perhaps for classroom favors or you know pop on your co-workers desk just as a, a little cheer me up during the workday um, but I actually made a few different ones because this one's a happy Halloween one and this is the one we're going to do today so I really like that one but you can decorate it for any occasion here's one that I did for fall and I used the old Stampin' Up! Acorny um, thank you and I just uh, punched a little acorn the little grateful comes in the stamp set this paper is the um painted autumn I think and uh, certainly I tied a little uh, a cording around it and it also has two kisses in there. Now I made another Halloween version and this one you don't necessarily have to have any special stamps because I just punched out a one and three quarter inch circle and made it look like a mummy and I'll show you how I did the eyes because it was on a tip from another subscriber uh, that I, I got the eyes the way they are. And of course, this is Happy Halloween is from the old Teeny Tiny Wishes from Stampin' Up, which is retired. They have a, another substitute for that or a new one for that itty bitty greetings, which I think has a trick or treat. I'm not sure. Some, it does have something Halloween, but I use what I have and um, it stretches my craft budget a little bit farther. Uh, but this paper is actually this paper on the other side. This, then I did this one. And the Joy stamp is actually from a Tailored Expression stamp. And uh, I used some of the glitter paper and an old one and three quarter inch um, scallop circle punch I have, which is a retired Stampin' Up, and a one and a half inch punch. And I embossed this with some white embossing powder and then some of the red tinsel that was from Stampin' Up as well. And I don't know if they have that one anymore either, but this paper was from the Merry Little Christmas. And I thought it just looked very pretty uh, to have a little joy in your Christmas too. All right, so today I'm gonna to do another Halloween one and I'll show you how I made this pumpkin out of a one and three quarter inch circle punch. And um, you can certainly decorate it any way you wish. So let me tell you what we need for this project. You need a piece of pattern paper that is eight inches by three inches. And I'm using, this is a retired stamping up and it is Spooky Cat. And you need for the pumpkin a scrap of some kind of orange and this is pumpkin pie that you can punch a one and three quarter inch circle out of and then I also needed a scrap of something green and this is old olive and I'm using the triple leaf punch for his top. All right so let's get going but let me show you what we're going to do first. All right so here's the template of what we're going to do it's an eight inches by three inches and the first thing we're going to do is put it up on the agent side and we're going to score it. Here, let me get my scoreboard, it might make it easier to see. I'm using my mini today so I can keep everything in the view. Okay, so we, we're going to score it first and, and I'll go, this will come across the screen when I actually do the scoring, but it's going to be at two and a quarter, two and a half, three, three and a half, and three and three quarters, and then at six and a half. Now this six and a half inch score line is the flap. When we turn it to score, you'll notice these scores stop at that flap line. And sometimes when I'm talking, you'll hear it go clink because I forgot to do that. But really, it's, it's I want it, you should score it to stop it at that score line. Okay, so then after you do those score lines, you turn it on the short side with the flap down. Let's see if I can get it all into here. Okay, make sure we're all in there. 
and you're gonna score it at a quarter inch on both sides. So if you just keep it tucked this way, it would be one quarter of an inch just down to that flap and two and three quarters of an inch just down to that flap. Now the last thing you're going to do, if you notice there's five score lines bunched together, fold it on the center of those five score lines and tuck that up to the um, guide and then we'll score that at one inch and two inches. And that just helps us square up our bottom of the box. And if your paper is a little thick, turn it over and just do the same thing on the other side, one inch and two inches, okay? You can decorative punch the edges. You can use a decorative reveal for the front inside of the pouch uh, and decorate to your heart's content. So let's go ahead and run through a real one. Okay, so we have a piece that is eight inches by three inches and we'll put the eight inch side up and we'll score it at two and a quarter, two and a half, three, three and a half, and three and three quarters. And then we'll score it at six and a half. Okay, so let's turn it this way. And uh, at quarter inch from each side, so a quarter inch on this one, just score it down to that six and a half inch flap line and at two and three quarters of an inch, just down to that flap line. Okay, the last thing we have to do, let me bring this back. Let's see, which way do I have it that way? So we have those five lines. Go ahead and, and fold it right in the middle. Put that fold line up and score it at one inch down to the first score line and at two inches down to the first score line. And with thicker paper, flip that over and do the same thing. One inch and two inches. Okay, that's our scoring done. All right, so let's go ahead and fold some of our score lines. We don't need to fold the quarter inches on the side yet. We're good on that one. So let's go ahead and fold the flap score line over. And this is a great time to line up your sides to make sure that you're folding evenly and that your scores were even. We have that, let me bring my template back. We have that center score line folded, and actually that's going to fold up into the bag. The stripe is going to be my outside. And then what we're going to do is we don't have to fold this first one down, but we do have to fold the outside of these two because those are going to be the bottom of the bag. So go ahead and fold the outside one in the back first, and again line up the sides so you know that you're folding it um, evenly folding it straight you have that one half an inch line that's there and fold the other part forward and fold that part back and that will give you this fold right here um, actually that fold right there that last score line um, it's a great time right now to make sure that your bottoms are even so it will stand up straight if anything you want the front slightly longer than the back but even would be great and now we can use our decorative punch to go ahead and decorate the corners of the flap if you want to, or a border punch to decorate the whole flap if you want to. Okay, so we got that part done. And now I'm gonna use a, a punch just to go ahead and give a pretty reveal. You don't have to do this, but that's this part right here, the inside of the um, front of the bag. And I just centered this between the two sides because it's just about as wide as the sides. And then I lined up that line right along those two uh, points and punched it, and that gave me a little bit of a reveal. And you can do whatever you want, or you don't have to do it at all. I just happen to like that. I think it looks pretty, so. All right, so now that we have our bag essentially folded the right way, let's go ahead and put our adhesive on. And let me turn this around this way so you can see. Here we are. The yellow areas are where we're going to put our adhesive. And I have a quarter of an inch adhesive, and I think I got this one at um, Tuesday morning, actually. I can't remember the brand name for it. But just go ahead and line it up on the edges right along those quarter inch score lines. We'll have two more places to put it once we get this part together. Now you can use a liquid glue, but you definitely have to wait until it is completely dried before you start pouching out the bag. Otherwise it'll just pop apart. <laughs> All 
Okay, so go ahead and squish that up and squish that front one up. Make sure your sides match and there we go on that part of it. The last part we have to do is just the quarter inch on both of the bottoms. So go ahead and take your adhesive and go ahead and put something on the quarter inch on both the bottoms, sides of the bottoms. All right, let's go ahead and just rub that down a bit. And that is our pouch. Okay, before we start pouching it out, just go ahead and fold back and forth on those quarter inch lines at the base of the back because that helps you get the bottom part of the pouch out, okay? All right, so with opening this way because I'm right-handed and I'm gonna be sticking my uh, um, bone folder into the bag to help with the bottom, go ahead and push in I put my fingers into that and I kind of push in the sides a bit and using my bone folder I'm just gently pushing up on the bottom of the bag against my fingers on the sides like I've been pushing I'm pushing this way and this way against my fingers so it kind of squares up the bottom of the bag a little bit and it gets that out and that's what the bottom will look like Now when you put something in there, that'll hold that open. And that's our little bag. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, collapse that down. And we'll go ahead and make our pumpkin. All right, so I have a piece of orange cardstock and this is pumpkin pie. Let me go ahead and punch it out. My one and three quarter inch punch and what I'm going to do is just cut off about um, a quarter of an inch width on one part. And that's going to be the bottom of my pumpkin. All right, let me bring my other one back in here. And I flat, I've taken the candy out so I can flatten them out a bit. So on this pumpkin, what I did was I went ahead and used dark brown or black ink. And this time I used the Memento. And I just went around the edges to make him look a bit, you know, like he's living in a field. And I actually did a little bit in the middle as well, just to make him look a bit grungy. All right, so what I did for the eyes, and this was actually a tip from one of my subscribers, is I took a piece of crap, scrap cardstock, and I used the quarter inch uh, handheld circle punch, and I punched two of them right next to each other where I thought I'd like the eyes to be. And then what you do is just line it up on your pumpkin where you want it. And I'll put about maybe a little above halfway down. And I kind of like it offset just a little bit so they're not perfectly horizontal to my cuts and then just fill it in. And I know a lot of people, I, I do draw some things and yes, they're not exact. I'm a very, uh, my stick figures can be challenging some days, but go ahead and draw that. And you got the two little pumpkin eyes. And then I did just draw a little triangle for a nose. And then how I drew the smile was I just drew a crooky little smile like that and then just echoed it below and then just colored that in. So there's my pumpkin. I think it's a little bit bigger. Now, I, I kind of like a stitched look too and make him look like he is kind of three-dimensional. So what I did is I just kind of put some big loose stitching around the sides and also a couple ones down the middle so that I would... There's, I took one of my Uniball Signo pens, which I like the white in this one because it really does look white. And I actually just put a little couple of shine like the eyes are shining. And I think that kind of makes him a bit more alive. All right, so let's make his hat. All right, to make the leaves on the top of his head, I actually used the triple leaf punch. But if you look through any of your, um, I don't know, foliage punches, leaves or flowers, I'm sure you could find something. But I used the triple leaf punch from Stamping Up because I had it. And how I made it look like that is I actually cut this right off Cut this last leaf. I actually probably don't need to go that far because I'm just cut that last leaf off. And then I glued it right on top like this. I nested these leaves right on the top of the pumpkin. You know, right up on the top near the pumpkin. Like that. And this guy I just piled up right over the other 
leaves there. Let me just trim that a little bit so it looks a little bit leaner. You could also uh, put it as a dimensional. Okay, and I tried to get it. This one I kind of covered one of his eyes a bit and I thought that looked cute. This one I'll move over a little bit. Okay, and because we're folding that flap over, I'm going to shorten that uh, stem off just a little bit. And I just drew some of the lines on the leaves, just very abstractly. So there's our little pumpkin. Let's see if I can do that on that little strip. We're going to use that. I'm going to use the Happy Halloween from the Teeny Tiny Wishes set. And I just think I'll, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stamp this one in Memento Tuxedo Black. Let's see if I can line this up. Oh, not so bad. I'm just going to go ahead and trim it by hand. And actually, I'm going to trim it a little bit closer because I want it to look a bit skinnier. There we go. There, that looks better. Oops. Get this out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is kind of curl it a little bit so it kind of looks like some of the tendrils. And on this one I did it on very vanilla with um, pumpkin pie ink. And let's go ahead and put that on our pouch. Alright, so I'm taking a little strip of double-sided adhesive foam. And go ahead and fold your flap down and about an eighth of an inch below it, right in the center. Put your uh, dimension down. And let's line up our pumpkin. And I'll put him about a quarter of an inch above the bottom of the bag. I think he's so cute. And then on this one, I'm going to actually glue it to the um, to the flap. And it will go up and down with the flap. And you can see as you pull that up, the happy Halloween comes up. And you can put your kisses or your Starburst candies, Jolly Rogers, anything that'll fit in there, really. And tuck that in, and it makes such a cute little Halloween favor. All right, I think this one's dry enough. Let's go ahead and fill you. And I have a couple extra hugs here. And we'll go ahead and tuck that in. So there you go. And they do stand up on the desk. And they're very cute. So here are my Halloween ones. Put those up there. Oh, here's another Halloween one. And I have a fall one and also one for Christmas. You know, your imagination is the limit. And I know you guys are creative. I see your comments out there. So I know that you're very creative and that you can take this even farther. So if you like the video, please subscribe. For more information, please go to rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, may all your days be blessed. Bye!